Okay, we need a motion to second. Accusation on student discipline hearing. I'm going to do Mark Beck. Mark Wilkes from the second. Any discussion, full joint session about it? Okay, at this time, the board will go in executive session on student discipline. Do I have a second? Second. How do you vote? Yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, just go ahead and start with A. Okay. Um, item A, to approve payment of an additional $85,000 for a total of $125,000 to Muhammad Ranabaya for the final parcel of property for Hearts Pre-K-8. Item B, a consultant agreement with Developing Minds Incorporated to provide teacher staff development October the 30th, 2012, according to the terms of the agreement. This will be paid for uh, from Title VI Professional Development Funds. If we'll wait till the end, or just talk about each item as we go. We got a question. Yeah, I do. Uh, on the consultant agreement, uh, on the contract on the yellow sheet on the left hand side of the book, uh, the rate is six thousand and sixty dollars. Uh, I know I had called and expressed a concern about this, and some of us, I think Mr. Meekin or Charlene or some of us, want to talk to us about this. What does all, all of that entail? Uh, that's one day of professional development. And it's in October the 30th. So could you tell us a little bit about that? Well, it's, uh, you know, our principal attended the Effective Schools Conference in Arizona back in the winter. And this lady spoke uh, while they were there. And I guess she's a, you know, dynamic uh, national presenter of these research-based instructional strategies, which tie into what we've been doing with our learning focus implementation and the, the IPI, the instructional practices inventory, the walkthroughs uh, that we do. And um, you know, the principals requested that we, uh, if we could, if we could work it out uh, and make it happen, um, they would like to have her here to talk to the teachers for a day. I just wonder about the follow-up after, if and after this happens, then uh, can we rely on the principals or someone to ascertain whether these strategies are being implemented? Yes, well, and we'll make sure even with our, our district walkthroughs. Okay, so uh, it, that, that it could be uh, added to the walkthroughs or something because I think it's about the use of worksheets. Right. Right, I mean this particular session. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I mean I'm concerned that we have some follow-up $6,000 is a lot of money to pay for one day. Mr. Mickey, excuse me. Go ahead. Mr. Mickey, what will the teachers receive in addition just to the lecture? Uh, $6,000 is a lot of money. Uh, I believe they'll receive some materials that they can actually take back in terms of handouts that they can use in our classrooms immediately uh, as a result of the one day professional development session. I did a little bit of research on uh, 
Uh, Mr. King's here, and he could probably help uh, answer the question, right? Is, yeah, I'm kind of chopping that bit, bit in there sure. a little bit. That, that's all right. Put me right on the spot because <laughs> I was there. Yeah, and then and also the travel and that six thousand dollars that includes the travel okay. expenses and everything, okay. you know. Uh, for her so. and, it, and it is for all teachers, for every teachers. Uh -huh. and instructional aides. If if we can get room, yes. I've heard the principals that received that said it was awesome. That it would be really beneficial. The actual premise of of Marsha's presentation is to get away from the use of the overuse of worksheets and um, it does align with what we've done in Lincoln County and specifically in the last couple of years with our emphasis on IPI which is student engagement and she is very very much aware of the the importance of student engagement and and will take us through all professionals and, and any other service personnel and take us through and show us actual strategies and she has books on each subject area that deals with what she calls dendrites so she and, and what she does is through a very interactive session she has she models what you can use in your classroom so she has you up and moving and everything that we're looking at and where the state department is headed with student movement and some of the things that Dr. Markle has been been presenting with our, our future initiatives is she is right in line with that so I, I think that it would behoove us to take advantage of this of this latest talents that answers my question because okay. it's not on yours <laughs> there's no way I can read that and get all that information so thank you is that for one school or it's for the it's whole, county. whole county. Whole county. All, teachers. All teachers. Yes. Yes. I think the contract says 300. Yes. Sean, would you like to look at this? Yeah. I would also like to add that not only does she have things for teachers about how to work with their children with dendrites, but also with parents. And she also has a book uh, for leaders on how to make sure that leaders are making sure that, that these kind of activities, activities are happening. I have 10 copies of that book presently and would be glad to make that available for anybody who would like to do some research. Could we sit in on, on that session if we choose? Sure. Uh, yes. no that would be great. I, so like she it. would jump the effort, or the, she, would, she would applaud the effort of, of a local board trying to get involved with what she what she does. I'm, I'm sure if you would embrace that. Okay, Trish. Okay, I would like to have item D pulled from the agenda. Also, item E be pulled from the agenda. Item F, additional employment days for the following personnel during the month of June from county funds. Mr. Sachs, uh, principal at uh, Lincoln County High School, 10 additional days. Katrina Moore, Pamela Pre-K-8 secretary, two additional days. If you remember, Mr. Sachs started um, after the school year began, um, and that also occurred previously with Mr. Linville, and we had given them days because the person prior to had used up those uh, extra days and in order to <coughs> able to close out the, the year and get everything in place, he, he would not have enough days. So Mr. Lindle would have missed the excuse part He of the did, day. yes. So this does not go beyond a regular employment time for him. Not for, I mean, in, in a regular employment time for a principal. Right. It just finishes. Finishes. Mr. Sachs. Mr. Sachs, okay. yes. Okay. And uh, Mrs. Uh, Moore and Hamlin, as the secretary, this is in order to close out uh, the school year all of the finances. Item G, an out-of-state trip for Lincoln County High School seniors to Kings Island, May the 17th, uh, 2012, transported by school bus and other expenses paid by the students. Item H, an out-of-state trip for Lincoln County High School students to Kings Island on May the 18th. 
transported bicycle bus and other expenses would be paid by students. And this is, uh, you follow up with that on Jay, and this is a math science day. These are math science uh -huh. days at, yes. at Kings Out. Um, item I, an out-of-state trip for Hamlin pre-K-8 students to Kings Island on May the 25th. Uh, transport by school bus and other expenses paid by uh, students. Um, the activities, the levy activities and fundraising will be uh, part of those uh, expenses that are being paid. Um, of course, the out state travel for the following employees. Um, Ms. Atkins, Ms. Fry, Mr. Plumley, Mr. Kameen, Mrs. Plumley to Cincinnati, Ohio on May the 17th to chaperone the students uh, to Kings Island for the Math Science Day. Uh, Ms. Turley, uh, Ms. Baker, Mr. Riazzi, uh, Mr. Ice uh, to Cincinnati, Ohio on May the 18th, 2012, <coughs> excuse me, to chaperone students to Kings Island for Math Science Day. Uh, Ms. Browning to Cumberland, Ohio to chaperone the, student, the gifted students on a field trip to the wilds. That did occur. She just had not uh, got this on the agenda prior to. The expenses were paid by the group. Uh, Mr. McLeod to Cincinnati, Ohio and in Port Kentucky to chaperone uh, his students to the Aquarium and Freedom Center on May the 31st, 2012, and the expenses are being paid by the group. Gina Fraley uh, to Orlando, Florida to attend the National Restaurant Association Summer Institute June the 24th through July the 1st, 2012. Those expenses are being paid uh, by the West Virginia Heat Grant and, and County Funds. There is a grant that does pay, and this is required for her uh, certification. Who is this person? She, a uh, pro star teacher. The pro star, okay. Pro star teacher at Lincoln County High School. K, uh, a professional service agreement with Pipe Stem Conference Center to provide lodging, uh, dining, and meeting room space June 17th through the 22nd for 2012 for Hearts Free K8 according to the terms of the agreement. Uh, <coughs> This is the uh, a retreat for the uh, school, and it's paid through Title One Professional Development. How much is it? students to Kings Island on May the 19th, 2012, transport by school bus and expenses paid by the group. And item item C, I didn't. Yeah, I'm going to ask the question that I'm C. I think we just sort of skipped it. Oh, I am so apologize. Um, approval for the Weekly County Baptist Association to use the Hearts Creek A facility as housing space for the mission volunteers. July the 7th through the 13th, 2012, according to the terms contained in a letter dated April the 12th, 2012. I think you have the letter. This is an organization that has um, been coming to this area for many years. I have a question in the uh, fourth paragraph of the letter. It says, uh, we will also give a gratuity to the custodians for that week. Now, does that mean they're going to give our custodians a tip and we're already paying the custodians or are they going to pay the custodians? What has occurred previously? I don't ever know that they've ever offered a gratuity to the custodians. A gratuity to me means a tip. But are our custodians already working? Uh, well, yes. some of them work 226 days. 26 days. There will be uh, custodians. 
That will be in addition to their regular pay, and we'll still, we will still pay them, but if they want to give them a tip, you know, for doing extra, which they will be doing extra. Our custodians will be doing their regular work and, and helping them, is that right? They'll have to clean up after them and, and things like that. Now, as far as their work hours, is, yeah. I mean, are they still going to be bound by their normal eight-hour work day? I mean, the custodians, Air custodians yeah. yes. Yeah. They don't change their hours. Because our experience with this group and the group that comes to Hamlet every summer is they they clean up after themselves. Well, I'm just concerned if uh, they work more than eight hours, if you know, we didn't incur any overtime fees. Well, it would have to be approved here to begin with. Right. Sometimes they do it and come later on. Well, <laughs> Mr. Price. <laughs> I don't think we did last year. No. And, and they also paid the estimated cost of utilities for that week. Both of those groups get a check. The county. Youth Works is the other group. <coughs> Any other questions on the map, Peggy Bell? I'll ask for a vote. Yes. 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 All right. Anyone sign in, Brenda? No. Okay. Presentation, Dr. Keith Smith. See you all this evening. I was waiting down the other end. Didn't see you come to the back door. I should have done that. Side door. As long as, Side I, door. As long as I went. I was there many times. Spent a lot of time here, like again. My name is Keith Smith, and, and I uh, was the director of the Coalfield Rural Systemic Initiative, National Science Foundation. <coughs> excuse me, National Science Foundation project, and Lincoln County was a participant in that. In fact, Jeff was uh, our county contact at, at one time. This project came about primarily uh, because in southern Coalfield part of West Virginia and the Southwest Virginia area, uh, we're experiencing some problems because a lot of the people, we had a lot of math and science people in this area at one time, and they were all retiring about the same time. And so concern was raised that they didn't really have leadership, people coming in leadership with the skills in math and science to help improve the programs. And so we got a grant, National Science Foundation, grant after we studied this a little bit and we set about the process of developing teacher leaders. Teachers who are in the school who work full time and we gave training afternoons or evenings and uh, summer we had a week long training session and we worked through a, uh, a lot of skills with, with these folks and you had two of the best. <laughs> of the people that, that we worked with very seriously. Uh, we had a lot of good people uh, uh, throughout it. And uh, this is just kind of a carryover. Uh, I was supposed to have made this award a long time ago. I had death in the family, was not able to get to the meeting. That was the last time the people were together. So I've been kind of going place to place to, to catch up with it. But I just wanted to, <clears throat> to recognize these folks and for you to know, you know what this was about. And incidentally, I've noticed, and maybe some of you have picked up on this, there's now a lot of work going on in this thing called teacher leadership, and particularly in, in rural counties, because it's, it's something, because of the limited number of people you have to do the job, and the fact that there are a lot of jobs to be done. And let me give you one of these. You're the beneficiary of something that was purchased a long time ago. And we have some up from the last Oh, one short. I didn't know. Sorry. There no, we go. We got them. And uh, I'll just, if you'll open that look in there, there's a, there's a brief description of, of the project. I want you to read that now. I want you to go to the second page. 
You can get a second page. Sir? I'll read off first. Oh, I've got I've got additional copy. I put these things together myself. I'm losing my mind. So, but that's a, a list of jobs. They're in every county. Doesn't make any difference. You got 20,000 kids. You got 2,000 kids. Those jobs have to be done in the county. And what we found in in the counties where we we're losing people was that we we're losing people that had content knowledge in math and science. And so it was difficult to replace those. And it was difficult to hire somebody that was a math or science person to work full time. So this teacher leader thing with training the folks gave us some capacity to provide people with skills, knowledge of how to do some of that leadership stuff. And so you're too, <coughs> excuse me, you're two folks are here. And I just wanted to bring them up and, and recognize them. I, ha I did learn one thing, certainly. I learned a lot of things. But one, that, that you can train people and give them the skills, but somebody's got to give them permission when they go back home to do that, to do the leadership, and time to do it. It does take some time. Uh, we paid these folks $3,000 a year to go through this training and everything. And uh, I, I think we got, I think you all certainly got a uh, good production out of it. So I'd like to call Darlene, <coughs> pack it up, Darlene. I think most of you know Mark, Darlene's math teacher, and she worked with the project the whole time. Uh, she was the first, this was the first county to do what we call the program improvement review, where we brought people in, they looked at the program, not to criticize it, not to do that, but to say, here are some things that we see that might help to improve your program. I think that As an then it, it got translated into the whole county. Right. I think you uh, were our principal when I organized that. Oh, right, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> I know Steve. <laughs> <laughs> you remember them all, County? Sure do. I, I assure you that uh, <laughs> Mrs. Tackett came back and shared with the staff on a regular basis and, and brought me into the loop, too. So she, <laughs> she did a great job. But she, she did. Okay. And you, like to say anything about your well don't have much I can't talk very well at all with my grandson's ball game Friday and never been able to talk since <laughs> but um, I just appreciate Keith I know Keith well and appreciate the opportunity that you all have allowed me to have to be a leader to other teachers and I still feel like I'm a leader in my school and and uh, I just enjoy that role very much thank you for the opportunity Jonathan, <coughs> Jonathan Eskew was our science person. By the way, we had one math, one science person in <laughs> every county, all the 17 counties. So Jonathan did a lot of stuff. Jonathan kind of became our poster boy in, in a sense. <laughs> <laughs> because we, after six years of the program, seven years, six years of the program, uh, going into the seven, <coughs> we actually held a forum in Washington, D.C. in the Rayburn Building. Uh, and presented to congressional people there uh, about this whole thing, not just here in Lincoln County, but we had there like 30 of these projects around the country. And so we had people talking about just selected ones of those. And Jonathan gave an outstanding presentation, and uh, I think you spent about two hours with the uh, Senator Rockefeller. Several you have to that. Senator, yes. so, talking about Lincoln County. Yes. And, and so, you know, Jonathan, I'm very impressed with the, I'll tell you, the facilities, the lab facilities in this high school are as good as any place I ever went to college and most any college I've ever been into, to be quite honest about it. It's, it's amazing. And I know Jonathan has played a lot of uh, roles in, in working with the improvement of the science program in Lincoln County. And so I'm, I'm very proud of him. I know that you are too, as uh, Darlene as well. Well, thank you, sir. Uh, <laughs> Before I talk about this systemic initiative, uh, it, it's rare what's happened in this room right now. Two of my heroes are here, okay? Uh, Dr. Smith for his passion. I didn't know this guy the first time I met him. Walked into a, to a conference and he comes up and says, can I help you? My name's Keith. And for a long time I just known him as Keith. And later on I learned about all his accolades and, and his skills. And as, as, as our relationship developed, I learned about his passion. And, and people who know Dr. Smith talks about his passion. Uh, and the other is, and, and, and this is, this is a, a, 
a testament to the hero worship I give. You know how you have to put in those security questions when you open up accounts to whatever? When it says, who was your best teacher? I write in Wilkerson. Okay? Okay, so, so having said that, the systemic initiative. It was a wonderful experience for Darlene and myself. And, 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 and let me get this straight. Ten counties in southwestern Virginia. Eight, eight counties and ten here in southwestern Okay, ten got it backwards. And to share with what was going on with the other counties and the other people and, and to have that network, it, it was invaluable. And those relationships still exist. But we brought back, and, and, and I thought, well, what am I going to say because there's tons of stuff. But at the end of the day, Darlene and I tried to bring it back. And we've had countless workshops in Science Avenue. Well, and, and, and an opportunity to do three book studies. You know, book Science studies, workshops, uh, demos. It's, it, it just, the list goes on and on. And, and, and it was wonderful because what was happening with our initiative was always on the cutting edge. And as we progressed to our, to our learning focus, it just blended so well all the things with what really needs to take place for learning. The Marzano work, the, what has to happen in a classroom. Uh, it, was, it, it was a wonderful experience and, and we continue to try to share uh, what we've learned with, with others. It has to be sustainable and we, we try to make that happen. And I appreciate the colleagues before you and some of you still here uh, giving Darling and myself that opportunity. It's, it, it, was, it, was, it was wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. These two individuals helped us a lot. Yeah. Oh, boy. <laughs> so, but I, I appreciate your time. I know you got a lot to do, but these are great people, and I, I think we really had a handle on a really good program, which we could expand and, uh, you know, and grow the thing, you, really. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you all. Well, President Curry and Mrs. Lucas and members of the board, uh, we are very grateful to be able to come and make a presentation this evening on a life for a lifelong good person, lifelong friend. And, Several of our classmates uh, are with me, and I'm not sure if a copy of the petition that we sent down got in your folders or not, but uh, we will be presenting you uh, with petitions, 32 of them signed by um, the class of 1960 from Duval High School. And what we're looking forward to is for you to award Joanne Bowman Loftus with an honorary uh, diploma from Duval High School. And we submit the following uh, to justify this petition. Mrs. Bowman attended schools in Lincoln County from the first grade to and including completion of her junior year at Duval High School. After her ju uh, year, junior year at Duval, although maintaining excellent grades, consistently making the honor roll, uh, she dropped out of school of her own choosing, a decision, of course, that she regrets to date. But in 1986, she completed all the requirements and was awarded a GED from the Lincoln County Vocational School here at Hamlin. She recently celebrated 52 years of marriage to her high school sweetheart and classmate, Mr. Dean Loftus. They are the parents of two sons, both graduates of Duval. <coughs> they are the proud grandparents of three children, all having graduated from Duval. And Mrs. Loftus would be here this evening, but one of the grandsons, who is a defender of our country, spent a tour of duty in Afghanistan, returned home recently, and had a very serious health problem, and just, I think, got out of ICU. So that was more important than her being here, of course. She has six great-grandchildren, and I'm not so sure that they all won't be able to graduate from Duval, but hopefully Lincoln County School. Joanne has remained faithful. Here's what causes us to be so close to her. She's remained faithful throughout these 50 plus years and continues to stay in touch with her classmates. All of the reunions from 1960, Joanne has played a, a lead role in organizing the events to include the burdensome task 
of contacting. If you've ever arranged a reunion, you might know what she was up against. And this stands out. Throughout the years, she's taken it upon herself to always ensure that flowers have been purchased and displayed during the wake and funeral services of all of those classmates that have been deceased. Not only that, the most that I've ever been to, she's also there as well. Joanne has been a lifelong resident of Lincoln County. She and her husband presently reside at Alcohol. They're considered outstanding neighbors and friends. Both are active in the Sycamore Grove Missionary Baptist Church. And there she is again when the need arises for benevolent projects, those kind of things, you'll always find her there leading in that. 32 of our classmates have signed this petition. We sent those as far as California, far south as Florida. And I, I pray that you will honor this. And I want to say this to you. In all the years that I've worked, um, after graduating in 1960, I've been involved in some very worthwhile and some rather large projects to include renaming Yeager Airport in honor of our dear hero, Chuck Yeager. But there is not very many things that mean as much to me as does this and, and the classmates. Great notes coming back. Hope this happens. Let me know. That, that sort of thing. So I come begging you to award her, as simple as it might seem, an honorary diploma so that she can officially be a part of the class of 1960. And I'll answer any questions you might have. I have no question, but uh, I'd like to suggest that the superintendent put it on the next agenda so we can vote on it. I'm certainly encourage the board to, to go along with it because I think it's right. Thanks. I, I have a question. Okay. Do you envision this being a, a formal certificate or is this just a, a resolution? What do you really say? I, I really would like to see a certificate. And I'd like to see it either uh, presented uh, by a board member, uh, a superintendent, um, with some of her classmates. Uh, you'll, you'll not believe the response when I ask her if it would be okay to do this for her. To us, it seems like kind of a simple thing. She is terribly excited that she will be officially, after 52 years, would it be a I'm an official graduate of Duval High School. Well, I say that because realizing that Duval High School doesn't exist, there, right. and there aren't diplomas that we would be we issued to other have students. Have, there, there are diplomas that can be pulled off of a computer that I'm sure that somebody on staff would be able to do that, or somehow. I'd like to come up with a certificate. Well, that's right. I wanted to clarify what it is. That we'll, we'll, uh, we'll even get the frame and pay for it and make sure that it's done, you know, nice. I just want to clarify. Be in one of our the original ones that we give out are diplomas rather than the him putting it in a frame. Well, however you do what I think what needs to be in a do ball. Well, that's what I'm asking. Yeah, I'm do -ball. just trying to clarify right. what it yeah. is. Yeah, we're possible. Yes. Yeah. Trying to get it. Yeah. Maybe Mr. Wilkerson has one stuck in his desk. It's possible we might be able to find them. I, I don't know. I can't can't really say right <laughs> we're now. We're going to leave that up to you. Yeah. Uh, Put him on the spot. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> I bet there's one laying around over there somewhere. Yeah. No, I just want to what they were yeah. seeking. With this being on there, uh, Mr. Curry, I mean, he's on here already to present this. I don't know why we couldn't just go ahead and vote on it now. Well, what my thinking was, we bring her to the board meeting and present it at a board meeting to be sweet. If we could well, get I, that. It's not an action item, though. I think it's only for discussion. Yeah, yeah it's only for discussion. We need to we need we Problems with this? I'm aware. Okay, well, I just want to know if we're going to be legal. Yeah. <coughs> I mean, we can set it for any board meeting next two or three months. I've got her name. Okay, that'll be fine. We have to see when Let she can put. come also. Yeah. So she would have been here tonight because she had planned on coming, and then when I talked to her two days ago, she told me the series just got choked and ended up rupturing his esophagus, and it just you know, took his life. Yeah. Well, Let me yeah. also, I'd like to thank some of the classmates of kind. Of. This yeah. is Lester Searles and his wife, Mrs. Nawasa Oney, 
Tater or Crater, or how do you pronounce it? <laughs> Trader. He also was our class president. And this is my best friend, and the reason I can stay in touch with him, if it wasn't for him, I'd been last in my class. Oh. So, that's Carson Tully. And he can take he takes a good joke. Yeah. And with your with his help you were next to last. That's, no, that's what he said. <laughs> and by the way, I played softball against Fred when I was yeah. 16 and Fred was 70 at the time. Right? Yeah. We did, we played softball against each other, Fred. Yeah, I that's right. That. Yeah, I remember, yeah. Thank you, you're very kind. Thank you. Thank you. We'll wait to hear from you. Yeah. Okay. All right, thanks. Yeah, we'll Come on. Yeah, I know. Under petition? I'll give you one. We want to not get upset and pay what Mr. Smith and Keith gave down here. Two sheets. Everybody get two sheets? Two sheets? I got one. Yeah. Finally, get the first one. Okay, Mr. King and Dana. Congratulations. I'm not real sure what what it is that we are presenting tonight, um, other than the fact that uh, to just reiterate the need for the portables at West Ham. Um, in the over the past couple of uh, months, I've had the opportunity to work with the CEFP folks and I've, I've looked at some of the data in the CEFP manual and, and some things that have come to, come to my attention is that the maximum capacity for West Hamlin is 515 students. Our current enrollment today is 523. So we're, we're operating in over 100% capacity. <laughs> um, and uh, with, with projections of next year, we're probably going to exceed 530 with, with increased pre-K numbers. Um, and we, we must add another fifth, first grade class because of the, the numbers in the, at the younger level is where the, where the increase is, is really hitting us. Um, our fifth grade that will will go on to, to Guyan Valley this year is um, is uh, 52. We have 64 fourth graders who will be rising fifth graders next year. So that the numbers are increasing. So we 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 need the space. Um, currently, I, I just mentioned we need to add a first grade class. There's not a room available at West Hamlin. There's not a room available. Right now, we have two Title I teachers sharing a room. So for them to do, for them to serve as students in a pullout capacity, we, we have to be very creative in our scheduling. And, it, and we, we really need to have that, those rooms available. So that would be a need for another room. So that's two. We have two interventionists working with our kindergarten, first, and second grade classes, and that intervention is taking place in a hallway. That's the best we have right now. And we're, we're making a buy. But we, we, I, I believe we owe it to our children to give them the best that we can. And, and these interventionists are working with students who are identified based on their dibbles and, and other assessments, uh, SMI, TMI, or T, SRI. Scholastic reading and scholastic math inventories that they are identified as needing some extra assistance. So to have them in the hallways, that's again that's the best we can do. But eventually, those those children could be labeled, and we I, I really don't think that we want that kind of criticism happening to us. Um, and then and finally, when a specialist. Orth, uh, orthopedic or speech pathologist not on staff comes and needs to test, the only space we have available right now is in the library. 
So we have to close the library down while they're doing that testing, that diagnostic testing. So our students lose access to the library. So if we had two portables, those four rooms, we're still, it's going to, we're going to max it right back out. But we, we feel like that that's, that's just a necessity right now. That's all I have to say. As far as Gump said, that's all I got to say about that. Uh, well, you. I'll, give some status. Status. I'll give you some status and uh, let you know. We'll talk about location a little bit. Uh, if you're familiar with West Hamlin, we're going to locate the modulars in the back of the school, so they'll be kind of hidden. Uh, if, if you remember, recall the there was a metal building that we've already uh, had tore down. We sold in a public auction. Uh, we took bids on moving the modular at Aitonville. Uh, several months ago, purchase order's already been done for that. It's roughly $7,000 to move it. The one in Putnam County is at Buffalo High School. It's roughly going to be 10000 to move it. Uh, the additional cost is due to, uh, uh, we're going to have to take the decks, pay, pay the company moving it to take the decks off, haul them away. They've got to weld some hitches on those modulars and um, and there's an extra mileage uh, for that for that one. So that's the reason for the additional cost. Uh, the modular at uh, Aitonville, currently the utilities have all been disconnected. The decks have been removed by my people and it's ready to it's ready to go. Um, We've looked at both modulars. They're going to match up perfectly. They'll be situated similar to the modulars at Midway where there's a ramp that goes between the two modulars. So one ramp will serve the students going into the modulars. There's uh, two classrooms in each modular that share a bathroom. And they, the modulars look like they were made from the same company. That's how closely they are. I was going to have a paint crew paint them the same color, maybe some school colors, green or something. Yeah, that's I got a yes on that, so that <laughs> sounds good. Um, uh, the modular at uh, Buffalo will be available June eighth, and the principal has assured me that he'll have everything out of it. And, uh, the only thing we'll have to wait on is for the power company to come and take the electric off and the, their board of education is going to unhook the utilities. They just didn't want those decks and I don't blame them. So we're going to get rid of them for them. If they're giving us a module, we can surely take the, the decks off and get rid of them. So that's all I have. Well, they should be up and running plenty of time for Oh school. yes, they'll be ready to go when school starts. And uh, if I could add to that now, with that so that you know in case you get calls of people asking you who's going where and what's going on my the, my plan is for the fifth grade which is three classes and a specialist to be to be moved out to those modulars and that will afford me the opportunity to get some of the the grade levels back together as teams currently we have five kindergarten classrooms and one is on the far end of the building away but by a, by having these three rooms open within the building, it will afford me, I've already talked with third grade teachers, they're willing to relocate so we can have third and fourth together on one wing, we can get first and second closer together and get our, our fifth kindergarten class down where she needs to be so that we have that collaborative team in, in, in proximity. Because it is, I mean, it, when, you, when you're out there on the one end of the building, everybody else is on the other end of the building, you kind of feel like you're on an island. So we have a plan in place. Um, so that, that, that is the plan right now is for the fifth grade to move out. I don't, want my, I don't want the little ones having to come in in the weather. The bigger ones can handle that just a little bit better. Well, doesn't this help alleviate some of the issues we were having this year with the restaurants? It will indeed. It will indeed. What, what did you say on the restrooms? Is there one restroom? Is that what Dan said? There's one restroom for each, each modular. The two classrooms share a restroom. So there would be two restrooms? Yes, two additional restrooms. Who will you be, uh, and when you, do you anticipate moving the one from Uh We could. We
we could move in as early as next week. I, I may wait till the kids are gone. That's what I start saying. Uh, which is only two weeks. Uh, I kind of intended on doing that, but and you'll actually need them both to together I, anyway before you start. I'd like to request that you would because we have next week will be our uh, West test makeup, yeah. and and uh, and as that comes to a close, we have a lot of uh, celebrations scheduled at West Hamlin. So to have things moving in and around the parking lot with with uh, projected inflatables and that kind of thing, I, I think we just may want to hold off. Yeah. Not that not that I don't want them in there because we got a lot of things to do. That's but fine. Uh, That's fine. I, I'd like to for our babies to be able to celebrate a little with some safety. Is the electricity removed from the one at Aikensville already? Uh, from the meter, yes. Whether the power, the, I contacted the power company. Whether they've taken it off the pole yet or not, I'm not sure. But it, it's not going to matter. They, the, the, the electric is up in front of the Yeah, that's, I mean, as long as you've got a disconnect out there, you don't have to worry about that. The, the only reason it would matter is the poles real close to the modular and until the power company dis makes their disconnect if we need to cut that power pole down in order to get them out that would be the only reason that we'd need that done prior to doing it. I'm not sure if that's the case or not. But you could check on that yes. next week? Yes. Yeah. I figured I had two weeks to okay. uh, play with here. Else? I, I, I'd like to again invite you anytime, board members, come over and see West Ham. Just come over and walk through. Uh, we just we just finished a school of excellence uh, visit, and and uh, I want to thank you for uh, supporting us in that endeavor. And uh, I'm being as patient as I possibly can uh, with the state department, uh, and they're uh, letting us know one way or the other, but. Uh, Stop by and see us. We'd love to see you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Dana. Before we go on, can I ask Dana a question that's not related to that? Um, are we going to have air conditioning at Diane Valley before graduation? Before their graduation? Uh, the interior units are mounted. The exterior units are not mounted yet. We've been waiting on some dry weather because we're going to have to bring it crane with a lift to lift those up on the roof and it's just been too wet to do that so hopefully we'll get some dry weather and, and it's going to be tight it's going to be tight but you'll try really really hard We're, i'm going to try harder now <coughs> okay when is the graduation you know i'm not sure but i think it'll be week after next when you <laughs> I guess I forget about middle school having graduation. Yeah, and, they do, and it's and, so uh, hot. I, I, I really hadn't thought of that, uh, but I'm going to try harder now. Okay. I know fifth grade is scheduled at Dime Valley on uh, May 29th. Okay. Thank you. Okay, funding with questions. Is it Mecklen County High School? Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Gail McKinnon. I'm a student of Lincoln County High School. Um, I'm also a senior. As you know, four kids from Lincoln County High School brought home a gold medal from Skills USA. Uh, we are here today to request uh, uh, aid, uh, money, so we can make the trip. Uh, these including myself, uh, Molly Hoke, Rachel Elkins, and Wesley Atkins. Uh, they all placed first in the states, and we have an opportunity to go to national June 22nd to 25th. Uh, as you can see on your paper, we have a, um, a list of expenses um, with hotel and uh, getting in. And also, if you turn on the back, you'll see uh, we'll go out to eat and throughout the day um, and you can see uh, how much that's going to cost. Uh, I really hope you guys will help fund us. Uh, 
because we're representing Lincoln County High School and West Virginia State. Uh, if there's any questions, I'll feel free to ask. Well, do you have any funds already gathered up? Something. <laughs> we do have some funds in our Skills USA account, but uh, not enough to cover the cost. So this is in addition to what you have? No, we have paid some of the expenses already. Uh, we had to put a down payment uh, with the state. They actually provide transportation, and we have to had to put a down payment. We had to put down half of um, like the hotel and conference registration expenses. So where it said a total of $2,465, we have been able to pay half of that. And then uh, we still have uh, like the expense of uh, meals for the students also. So what are you asking yeah. for? Well, well, I ask, <laughs> I mean, I, whatever you, you know, I, I just, whatever you all can spare, we'll have to, you know, whatever you all are willing to let us have uh, to help us with this trip. If not, whatever will have to be. <laughs> <laughs> on, on the on the very back, you'll see the total cost. Oh, yeah. The total cost is, and we have uh, paid, uh, like I said, uh, $12,000, like $12,030, $35. Uh, whatever we don't get from Lincoln County Board, we will have to make up those funds in some fundraisers or other um, I think we're still a little unclear how much you need to, How much I really need? How much do you need to do all this? $2,000. Yeah, $2,000 would be wonderful. <laughs> I'm sorry, I hate to ask for money. I'm not used to... Did you say you paid $12,000? $1,200. Oh, $1,200. I'm sorry. We paid $1,200 and... Yes. So the $2,000 would actually pretty well cover... $2,000 is what you're asking. Yes. Okay. $2,000 is what I'm asking for. Okay. I'm not good at this. Have you uh, talked to the Mr. Sachs at school about any help? Well, uh, actually, Mr. Sachs helped with our trip to state. We actually took more students to state competition this year than we ever have, and the bus of alone were like uh, the bus alone was almost twenty-five hundred dollars. So we have kind of exhausted our uh, uh, expenses or our money that he's willing to give uh, at the high school level. One more thing to persuade you. This is the largest group uh, that's actually brought home gold medals from state, and this is the largest group going to nationals representing Lincoln County High School. So it's, it's four students and three instructors. Can I ask a related but unrelated question? Sure. In your organ, this organization, this group here, do they? have an allocation of money given to them, you all each year or do you use from the state no from that anywhere we, that we pay okay in, in the past actually the state okay skills usa is the career tech ed uh, organization for uh, you know technical students and we have to pay to join the state level and the national level which we did and mr sachs helped with that and a lot of times we use funds from our program to help pay our costs to join, but they do not give us any money right. back. Does anybody give you your hard work? Give us. <laughs> 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 do we fund? Oh, we we fund no, 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 no. We fundraise for everything we for the ones raise. at our state level. We've actually received uh, donations from Chesapeake. Um, we've also received some funds for our state level from the VFW, um, from Napa, right. and a few other small personal donations. But we do not receive anything from the state level or the national level school just say for okay. any of our money. Okay, so you don't get anything from the national school. Do you get anything from the no. school level? No. Is Mr. Sachs funded this not, in any a, way? not allotted, other than when we ask and say, because like I said, when we okay. went to state, it was. Oh, I realize right. you gave some. I'm just so, trying to see if. So there's not any money that comes. And in the past, last year, the state actually gave money to the students for meals. And this year, the buses had gotten, gotten so expensive, there was no, I contacted him, I said, are you going to give us money this year for student meals? And he said, there's not any left, that they have used all their, their funding just to pay for transportation. Because they will take three charter buses from the state of West Virginia going to Kansas City. Well, I'm not in any like, question. Well, no, no, I understand. I, like I said, I'm just, yeah. this is terrible, but I, 
Well, I'm what just I'm not used to asking for money, and we just kind of came up a little short. And I know that in the past, people have come to the board and asked for their assistance. And as Caleb mentioned, you know, this we have four kids going this year, and that's the most that Lincoln County High School has ever um, sent two nationals from the state level competition. And I think we all appreciate that. And I understand. And I'm not, I know you're not trying to give me a hard just, time. I'm not trying to give you a hard time either. No, but I'm I'm just, just, that's the reason I said it's related but unrelated. Because right. what, you, what right. you went on further to say, we get a lot of requests right. for a lot of things, and they right. just seem to be mounting. And yes. I think at some point we have to kind of get a handle on uh, you know, what we're going to do. Right. And that's why I wanted to, I was just trying to see if you, if your group got a, an annual amount from allocation from anyone, or you just kind of took it as you made it we as take you it as, to. as we, as we like solicit sort well, solicit, okay. that's kind of a fun place. <laughs> as we ask for donations and then, you know, any of our programs that have fundraisers, we put into a skilled USA, uh, like account. We have an account where we, right. uh, fundraise. and we usually like the students, some counties actually have their students pay the dues, like the state and national dues themselves. And sometimes that's a deterrent for our kids to join because, you know, they don't have the, the money to join. So we kind of have tried to pay that. So when we kind of take that on, then that kind of depletes other funds that we would use for travel. I understand that entirely. Once again, I think this is just, once again, something not directed. Well, I, I will be quite but... honest. I will be quite honest. The reason we are here it's sort of because you have someone that a president uh, and have given money to other people and i mean i'll be honest and that's why when we talked about you know coming being a little short we're like well you know we could present it to the board and see if they have some funds available I don't blame and like you i said I, like i said that's kind of been in response to your being able to help other programs in the, the county when do, when do you need this well we're traveling uh I'm not sure the remainder has to be. Jerry, like I said, sent in part of it. Uh, we're leaving June the 22nd. Has to be in by June the 15th, sir. Okay, thank you. Okay, well, we'll, we'll certainly see if we can help you. Okay, we appreciate it. We'll let you know here. Okay, that's fine. We'll get a question. Okay. Student here, in your paper. Okay. Yes, sir. You will be doing job skills demo A. Yes, what is that? Could you explain to me what you're going to be doing there? It, I have uh, seven minutes to present uh, a model which I created with Jerry Kameens, uh, which is a, a disc brake, a front disc brake uh, model. And I take it apart and I do a thorough inspection with it and then I put it back together and I explain the components of the braking system to the judges. Okay. Thank you. Any more questions? Thank you. I have a comment. I think, you know, our high school is, is this year seems to be more flourishing more in different areas, and I'm, I'm really proud of that. And we I, have good I think, instructors. Yes. I'm, 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 I, I guess I'm too free with money, but I say, God, you know, let them go. Sorry, guys. <laughs> we all, we also we we understand money's tight everywhere, but and I'm not sure in our county how, how to go about making you know to try to make funds. Right. So I do know that Caleb's good at changing oil and taking care of all that kind of stuff, and that feeds money into their program, which they in turn help us. But, but see, like with health occupations, there's not a whole lot of services that we can do in order to get reimbursed, like computer repair or the graphic design or, you know, automatic, auto, auto mechanics. I, I, I'm really proud of them and I like to see the kids rewarded. It's been a good year for I think it's I think it's a worthy endeavor and, and I'm so proud of our kids too. I think I think it's wonderful to go to the state and win and to be represented nationally. Um, the only thing I, I the only reservation I have, not particularly with this group, is with all groups because I don't know how to determine what's worthy to give money to. I mean, if we have 20 more groups that come and says we need money, how can we say no to any of them, Bertie? And it's <laughs> <laughs> have anybody left? You know what I'm saying? I mean, uh, I'm concerned. Yeah, I want them all to go. I want. Yeah. I have no reservations about anybody going anywhere if they, you know, for academically or even sports-wise. But I, I think sometimes we're going to have to determine, or you all will, that you know, how to go about this with a fair process for all the children, because I think all of them deserve 
all the money we can give you. The question is, how much money can we give you? You know. Yeah. I think we've discussed this yeah. before, and she's going to okay. she's going to present yeah. you know um, a solution. We think yeah. it's just hard for us to say no. Well, well, it's not in us. <laughs> <laughs> well, and it, so it has to be us. So we want to try to give you all. We're going to take it away from you guys. That's so. what we want to hear. Hard, yeah. <laughs> It's hard for us. This solves one, one issue, right? Just the, the fact that you all it brings don't have a, yes. a process. Yes, yes. a process. So. Now that you've got a new process yeah. in place. Good but, luck to you. Uh, I do want to say that we're so very proud. And you said you had good instructors, but they have good students. Oh, that's so, right. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's it's good to the occasion, you know. So we're very proud. Fantastic. Good luck to you all. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for having us here. <laughs> good luck to you, sir. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, moving on to finances. Okay. Don't forget the play. Tuesday, the 22nd of May in the evening. We have a board meeting. Yes. Oh, we have to count through the day. Uh, day. Uh, actually, it's going to be Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Oh, okay. Morning, afternoon, uh, Monday. Uh, morning, afternoon, evening, Tuesday. And morning and afternoon, Wednesday. Okay, so we can catch one of them. Yes. And we've got some of the... Susical. Yes, yeah, Susical. <coughs> it is Susical. Seven. Yeah, what's that? Musical. Physical. We've got some of the, it's kind of interesting because we've got some of the loyalty. I've been one of them. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, you guys should have a copy of the invoices that are getting ready to be paid in the amount of $1,247,065.21. And I have copies of the invoices. And if you have questions, we'll address those later on. Um, the other thing we need to do tonight is go ahead and put our blog. Public <laughs> budget on public review, and I have a copy for you guys. Mm -hmm. Is this going to be on there? No, no, it's okay. just a, it's just, I, I just thought, you know, I'm going to hand you guys a copy. While well, you're giving this out, let me ask you a question. Okay. I don't care. This National Flood Insurance Program, mm -hmm. could, could you just sort of apprise us of what that is? Uh, well, actually, it's paid to Lincoln A. Well, it's kind of through Lincoln Agency. Oh, oh, you have one. Yes, but it it is. Okay. okay, that's okay because I'm not going to talk about it. I'm just giving it to you guys. Uh, National flood insurance is insurance for uh, our school buildings, Duval. Okay, so uh, it's actually insurance for our buildings. For floods. Okay. Uh -huh. okay. Yeah, and actually it's the one that paid off all that big money way back when Christopher got destroyed. Yes, and so here's another thing, uh, just a little worksheet that I've done on. Uh, the top part is certified list comparison for a few years, and then the bottom part is budgeting comparison. And just to let you guys kind of look over that. And bring these back for the May the 25th, because that's when we're going to have our actual budget hearing. May the 25th is when we'll do, we'll actually approve the budget, so it's, it's officially on public review. And we'll have our budget hearing on the 25th. Now, let me talk about um, student activities for a minute. Um, I, I really don't like seeing you guys put in a, kind of an uncomfortable position like this, and then we kind of open up the floodgates to everybody wants money. Uh, and that's kind of the reason we did student activities way back when, was to help pay for some of these trips. Um, so what we're going to do next year is we're going to put some more money into the student activities fund, which we're putting twenty more thousand dollars. And so what we're going to have to do is talk to the principals. Now here's your money. You know, you know these trips are going to happen every year, so you need to set aside. You know, we got skills. You know, there's the national competition uh, and the state competition, and speech and debate. So everybody needs to set aside and plan for these trips so that they're not coming to the board. Because I just don't. 
you know, I, I don't feel comfortable putting you guys in this situation. You know, so it needs to be handled at the school level. And there's Mr. King. I mean, you probably have enough money, Mr. King, for your activities. Yes, ma'am. Oh, yeah. And it's just a matter of taking the money that you're allocated and planning what you're going to do with it. You know, maybe you have to give up a King's Island trip for an educational national competition. But they're the ones that need to be making those decisions. You know, I don't like it. I don't like it coming to you guys. From the principal will know more of what the principal does. Yes. I, mean, it's I hard agree to with say you. No. It is. It's, 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 well, that's what I was I trying to get. We can't do it. We have it. Yeah. But that's what I was thinking. Yeah. What do I do now? If the allocations needed yes. to be increased for these things, and that's what you're doing. So we did. We bumped up uh, twenty thousand dollars because, like I said, I just don't like. I don't like this happening to you guys. You know? So we're going to push it back to the schools, and the, and the school principals have to make those decisions, and they have to do the pre-planning. Like I said, you know, maybe it's not a King's Island trip. Maybe it's a trip for instructional purposes for the kids. Or, you know, maybe the band needs to go to Florida, you know, or ROTC on trips. So they need to be planning for those things and not coming here. Yeah. And doing fundraisers beginning in September. Yes. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Like you said, they can better determine what's, what they consider more worthy, you know. I mean, we just, we like all of it. So. Right. Now, you say $20,000, is that... In total, all of it? No, they have uh, one hundred thousand additional. No, I did. I did additional twenty thousand. So that puts a hundred thousand dollars. It's allocated. Um, let's see. Um, let me see how it was. Oh, I can't remember. I have it in my office. Well, but I'm saying, are you planning on giving that? Uh, maybe, the high school may receive more than the high school will, will receive student, more. Student, yeah, per student. yeah, per student. Okay. But the high school has a heavier weight than the um, elementary. Right. Actually, it's junior high and high school has a heavier weight than elementary. So what was, was 20. The to, what's the total now for all schools? $80,000 for all schools. Plus and, 20. And yeah, I'm going to bump it up 20, so it'll be $100,000 next year. So, like I say, if they pre plan, there should be money. Yeah, good. <laughs> Well, something Bernie mentioned there, like when I asked about the national flood insurance, you said you think that's paid through Well, you know, actually, Lincoln Agency um, is who we go through, but the check is issued to national flood insurance. So, I don't know how you feel about that. Should I recuse myself from this? I don't see a problem with it, but it's a new decision to make. Okay, at this time, I'll ask for a uh, vote on all the items except uh, check number 481. Is that right, Don? 41381. 41381. Yes, sir. All but that. All but that one. I'll yes. make a motion. Oh. Say it. How do you vote? Yes. yes. Okay. Yeah, I'll accept that. Yeah, I'll accept that. Okay, now we're voting on 4381. 4138. Okay. Do I have a motion to approve that? I'll motion. Briefly. Second. Wilkerson. How do you vote? Yes. Oh, yes. Recusal. Martin. Okay. Okay. Comments or concerns? Uh, personnel. What personnel have I have? First nail. Do I have a motion on first nail? I move. Okay. Uh, do I have a second? A second. Okay. First nail. Okay. Uh, I think you all have probably the last revised uh, first nail schedule. Uh, the first page. Section A is the renewal of professional personnel pending renewal of the first class permit. That's section A. Section B, employment of substitute service personnel. Section C, employment of professional personnel. 
Section D, retirements and or a resignation. Section E, leave of absence. Then we go to the second page. All of these um, following uh, people are for summer positions only. I would like section F, I would like for you to look at F2, change that name from Bill McLeod to Brittany Porter. And then all the way on the last page down to F89, you will change Brittany Porter to Bill McLeod. Just got those reversed. You will notice within uh, each of these areas the dates uh, effective, the beginning and ending, and these are only for summer positions. These are not uh, permanent positions. And then there is one abolish uh, summer uh, position, it was grounds crew. We inadvertently posted when we already had the. Uh, on F81 and F82, I know you and I spoke briefly about this previously, Trish, I'd asked you a question. Th those are new jobs mm -hmm. for summertime only. For some, did we approve these jobs? I mean, did we approve the, no. the description of the job? Did we ever create the job? That's my no. question. Now, did you just ask that? These are, uh, would we have time to, yeah, to yes. go back and, and create them? Yes. And then hire them. We, have, we have job descriptions. These are two jobs that yeah. are uh, in the code. I mean, you know, they're not newly. Uh, but they're not in air. They're, they're not, we don't have these people. So. But you'd have to have about two again, then. Yes, we would have to have you to approve the job. Then we would have you would have to vote on that, and then we would have to post, and then you would have to um, wait the five days, and then uh, at board meeting hire them. Yes. So you could just change the dates they work. Uh, I mean, if we, they well, this is just a painter. It shouldn't really matter. No, where these two, F eighty one and F eighty two. Oh, okay, okay. So, well, F one eighty two. Yeah, those two. No, we can't meet. We can't meet the times. We'll have to. Well, we want to strike those two then. But I mean, later, after all, you go through the procedure, you can just change the dates to to work those a certain number of days. It doesn't have to be those particular days, does it? That would depend on Mr. Cummings. Uh, mm -hmm. We would, uh, we're going to have a posting go out Thursday, and it will be down five days, and then we will have, you know, we don't need posting. Uh, you have to create the job. Here I'm jumping in again. We, we on the next board meeting, on the 22nd, we could, we could create, and you all could prove the creation and then we can post and when's our next board meeting uh to you we can create on the 22nd yeah we can create on the 22nd and then we could post on the 23rd when's right. our next board meeting after that brenda well we meet 25th, 25th. The budget. there will be a time with time well when's june uh yeah. maybe june we have to have a special meeting. Fifth, June fifth. Okay. Next. So then that would just that just the only one it would really affect is that uh, first one, June. It's June fourth, July thirtieth. Yeah. Right. So yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we could strike yes. one day. Yes. One day. Yes. So we will remove um, F eighty one and F eighty two. Uh, 
uh, upon approval of uh, job description for those two positions. And, and I had asked you before, if, if, and this is mainly uh, inventory? Uh, and definitely, and I'll have those. You all the want warehouse to, clerk? Yes, and you all want okay. to see the job description okay. for these. So that will help slide up everything that they're going to be doing. Anything else on personnel? Okay, how do you vote on personnel with those two items removed? Yes. Yes, yes. yes. Oh, yes. Comments and concern. Lincoln County High School sign. I would like for it to go in the same position. Okay, at this time I'll ask for a motion to go in executive session. I move. I second. Do you vote? Yes. Yes. Well, you have anything. <laughs> After all that time. Anything worth it. On page two. Chris, on the comments and concern, do you have anything to say at this point? I do. Um, on the uh, bullet of uh, further information regarding a bus driver suspension, I would like to ask um, for correction to the April uh, 17 uh, minutes regarding Sherry Smith. Uh, there was a statement um, on the uh, April 17th referring to state board policy 4336 use of cellular phones or other portable electronic devices while driving a bus and we had um, documentation from the cell phone carrier at that time there on that date uh, the time of the accident there was uh, no cell phone usage just wanted to uh, clarify that. Want to remove that from the minutes of the 17th meeting? Yes, I would, please. Put it on the next agenda. Mm -hmm. okay. that all? Yes. Okay, before I ask for a motion to adjourn, are we going to meet at 6 o'clock or are you going to come a little early? Because that one we're going to evaluate for Trish. On May 22nd? Yes. Yes. <coughs> 2 o'clock was the 25th. Right? Uh, 2 o'clock was the 25th. Yeah. Right. Okay. So we, CEFP will be here at 4. They may not finish before. No, 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 on the 22nd. Yes. See, we meet the 22nd for Trish's evaluation. But the CEFP is coming after that, though, aren't they? Yes. They're going to be on the 22nd? Yes. Oh, yes. Yeah, that group's going to be prior to the board meeting. Okay. Hopefully come to, to the board with a prioritized list. They're going to meet at four, is that what you said? Oh, they're going to meet at four. Well, yeah, we don't go to that, so we can meet. No. Right. Mr. We can meet, you know, anytime. But we've got to go through and go through the evaluation. Right. And well, if they meet at four, they're going to last a couple hours, right? At least. Yeah. We're going to have a regular meeting after. Mm -hmm. Six. 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 Where's that big book? You already had that big book. How long? What do you do? You want to make a bus get together at 4 o'clock for a work session? What time, Brian? What time? 4 o'clock. You think it'll take us two hours? No, well, what do you want to make at 5 o'clock? If we're going to meet at 6, I mean, I think an hour would be plenty enough. See, now that's just when we meet, and then the second phase at 6 would then, when we ask. Trish, Trish is going to get with us, right? Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> Five o'clock for us. Six Five o'clock. Okay, now, um, that's 
that is an open session. No, that no, that big closed session because of the big home for evaluation. So more or less, how many abort stations for us? Right. That's right. That's and we do, do, it'll work continue work. to be in, in the executive session when Trish is right. Come right. in, right? We will. And it can all be closed session. Right. Yeah, the only time it'll be open is after we come up with a. A statement. statement. Uh, will the statement be during? I won't be here, so I have to send someone. Will the, so I want to be sure. Um, the statement will be during the regular session. Yes. I guess? yes, yes. Okay. In so we. Yes. So the media doesn't need to be here until six o'clock. Yes. And that'll be regular session statement plus CFP right. briefing or whatever. Perfect. Clear as mud. Okay. Okay. So we'll be here at five o'clock for the regular session. Okay, I'll ask for a motion and a second to adjourn until May the 22nd. After our work session, regular meeting at 6 o'clock. We'll meet at 5. We'll only just meet at the regular meeting. Whatever you say. I don't care. I move. You, you'll be here at 5 o'clock. I'm yeah. just coming at 5. I'll <laughs> How do you vote? Yes. yes. Thank you.